Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to look at a Socket 7 motherboard that has a very special name, the LMR585. The board offers both the AT and the ATX power connectors and right of the CPU we have 3 slots of SD RAM for a total of 768 megabytes. South of the CPU we encounter a radiator with a special branding of the VIA graphics. And further south there's another Viagra chip. As expansion slots, this motherboard is pretty spartan with only one IDE and one ISA connector. In the lower right area, there are two IDE connectors. And this motherboard also offers a floppy connector. Being of AT format, in the backplate area there's only the keyboard connector. And by having only two expansion slots, the motherboard compensates by having many headers that connect to the brackets supplied with the motherboard. The CPU we pick for today is IBM 686P150 Plus running at 120 MHz. And we start the assembly. The interesting part about this motherboard is the plethora of brackets that connect to the headers on the motherboard. And we start with the graphics header that provides a VGA connector. Next there's the audio bracket that provides regular audio connectors and the game port. Next we have the parallel and serial bracket that we are not going to use today. There's also an Ethernet bracket. And finally we have the modem bracket. When using the Cyrix processor, under Windows 98, during startup we get a blue screen that can only be avoided by disabling the onboard audio, so we're going to use this ISA Creative Sound Blaster. After we fit the ATX power connector, we start the motherboard and go to the BIOS. We make sure that the Cyrix support is enabled. And by going to the chipset features, we can change the amount of memory allocated to the integrated graphics card. The rest of the settings are pretty usual for this BIOS. Finally we're back to Windows and start by looking at CPU Z Vintage Edition and we see no level 2 cache. The CPU is auto detected as a Cyrix which is normal since it was produced by them for IBM. For the motherboard we can see that it uses the MVP4 chipset and it has a 2x AGP graphics card. We're going to take advantage of the built-in benchmark and compare this CPU with a Pentium running at 166 MHz. And we can see that Cyrix weren't off with their performance rating in regards to the arithmetic logical unit. But when it comes to the floating point unit benchmark, we can see that it is about 50% of what Intel achieves. We move along with more information 
this time from Sandra99. We can see the real processor speed and we can also see the performance rating that is estimated to 150. And this time we can also see the 512 kilobyte of level 2 cache provided by the motherboard. The video adapter is the VIA VT8501 that is an integrated graphic processor that is actually a Trident Blade 3D. In the next screen we have some motherboard information. And this screen offers some CPU and BIOS information. It is funny how the Cyrex CPU, besides the math coprocessor, has absolutely no other features. Finally we get to the benchmarks that look pretty decent compared to the frequency of the other CPUs displayed here. However on the multimedia side the results are pretty bad because of the lacking instructions from this CPU. For the chipset benchmarks things don't look so bleak but this chipset is still lacking compared to others. I started the 64K version of SuperPi and you can see the graphical anomalies specific to the load on the CPU. We move to final reality and we get the chance to compare the system to a Pentium 150MHz with an S3 graphics card. Overall performance is better for this system by more than 40% and while the 3D area is dominated by the onboard Trident Blade 3D, when it comes to 2D our configuration loses to the Pentium. Next we move to 3D Mark that is just painful to watch but I let it run anyways out of curiosity. And finally we switch to the games, where Test Drive 4 runs exactly in the same number of frames per second and is literally unplayable. Need for Speed 2 is a bit better and people may have played this game on a similar Cyrex but the lack of the frames takes all the enjoyment out of the games. Quake 2 is just disastrous. Resident Evil manages a decent 12 frames per second in the less crowded areas, but drops to 6 frames per second once the scene becomes more crowded. Thank you.
finally a game we can play. Age of Empires is quite decent and I have to admit that I got caught in the gameplay. The last Windows 98 game we look at today is 1997's Total Annihilation that is also quite decent in gameplay. Now it is obvious that we can't continue like this and I decided to move to DOS. After running Phil's computer lab tests from the DOS benchmark pack, it feels just like home for this CPU, maybe except for Quake. Day of the Tentacle sounds great. I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. And I have no idea what I'm doing in Civilizations. Also, GTA plays smoothly. Of course I couldn't conclude this section without one of my favorites, Lotus the Ultimate Challenge. Obviously I assume full responsibility for needing to revert back to DOS because of the CPU I picked. The MVP4 is one of the last chipsets released for Socket 7 and coupled with a faster CPU should have been able to handle Windows 98 games a lot better. Still this motherboard with its integrated graphics chip and integrated absolutely everything else and just one PCI and one ISA slot felt oriented a bit more towards businesses or office computers rather than enthusiasts. I also tested the motherboard with a Pentium MMX 233 MHz and a 333 MHz AMD K62 and I'm happy to report that neither of the two have the onboard audio problem I reported for the Cyrix CPU. So if you want to see more of this motherboard with any other CPUs, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.